was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered the Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word. My fetters fell listeners and welcome to the Pentecostal Holiness Church Bible Study and not here more, is more than David. that more than that the Saturday night Pentecostal Bible study Holiness Church Bible study right, the clubs ahead. are closed the pubs are closed <laughs> <laughs> yet the hospitals and online churches open yeah we're here to keep you out of the hospitals. And how we're going to do that is through the mighty word of God. And Amen. also to put our tissues in the bin rather than on the pulpit when we <laughs> use them. Amen. Lindsay, thank Amen. you. Praise the Lord. We'll see you later. We're here tonight in the name of Jesus. Led of the spirit of God. And the Lord has had us react to this. COVID-19 scare. Now, we know many people are afraid, and we're not coming here with condemnation if you are. We're here to lead you to the Word of God. You know, it's not God who gives us the spirits of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of the sound mind. And my encouragement to you is this. That if you come into the word of God, the Bible says, attend to my words. They are life unto them that find them. Help to all our flesh. And Father, we come in the name of Jesus around your word. Knowing that thou hast led us to preach and teach thy word. Particularly at this time where so many people are on lockdown in fear 
or frankly very ill indeed. The word of the Lord draweth, and we're here to bring you the true word of God, not the Alexandrian counterfeit, but the true word in the name of Jesus. Now you will see before us scripture all around me. Let them not depart from thine eyes. You see? Keep them in the midst of thine heart. They are life unto them that find them and health to all their flesh. We're here to introduce you to the Savior tonight. On the this side, I always get it wrong because it's always the opposite the way round, which you think it's going to be on television. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. These are awesome days and very serious days. And the greatest crime of the devil who declared in Isaiah 4, we're dealing with our other Jesus course, which we began on Sunday mornings. You see, our format has been led of the spirit to change, the content never to change. Because the word of the Lord changeth not, unless you're of the Alexandrian line where it always changes. And the introduction to our other Jesus course began with the warnings of Isaiah and Paul to give the understanding of the Antioch and Alexandrian line. You see, if the devil proclaimed he was to be like the Most High, he's going to have his own Bibles, his own mythology, which includes Baal, Bera, for a baby born to Baal, to a virgin. It, he, he is a copier but a counterfeit. And your NIVs, your NKJVs, your message Bibles, all that are counterfeits of the real thing. And this course proves that. And they are manifestations of what Paul calls another Jesus. We read from 2 Corinthians 4, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is him to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. This is our heart, to preach Him and Him alone. And Father, we come in the name of Jesus to proclaim that we are not here to preach another Jesus. We're not here as we've covered in previous parts of this course to preach what Oregon preached which was that there was a son less than the father this Oregon is classed in the Nestle Alan text introduction to the false Greek which underlies all new translations as being less than the father and it led to the heresy of Arius and Paul warns of the other Jesus. And we warn of him too. But look what the Christian life is all about. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded 
the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Many years ago, when Lindsay and I were told of the Lord about the other Jesus, who Paul warns about, we had a light change in effect that it was far easier to use the new translations because there came no attack with them. And when you start preaching from the true word of God, not the other Jesus which is commonly spoken of, the attack comes in as Paul describes. You know, we are partakers of his sufferings to enable us to be partakers of his resurrection. We are called to pick up our cross to follow him. If you go to our constitutionkeepers.org website, you will see a depiction of the Christ picking up his cross. Such is the walk of the true Christian. In one sense, it's for so much easier to be in an NIV church, but you're not preaching the true word of God. And you will not be equipped, equipped being the right word here, with the true word of God. For only by the true work of God, word of God, can you be perfected for the work of the ministry. So you need to have a King James Bible. Your life will change and you will live the life that Paul lived. But although there will be valleys, there will be great mountaintops experiences. We speak of many in our lives. Look what Paul continued to say. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. These are awesome words. The last time we continued this course, we were looking at how Clement, who became head of the School of Theology at Alexandria, Egypt. Now listen to me. If you have an NIV, you have the codices of Egypt. These are not disputed. NIV has come through spiritualist Westcott and Hall to produce the revised version of 1881. And they use codices Alexandrinus. Where is Alexandrinus from? Egypt, the school of theology, of the culmination of philosophy um, and paganism and a form of Christianity, a counterfeit form, which is what I was taught in ministry training. We observed it with our local minister of the Church of Scotland here in Whitton. He'd been taught exactly the same stuff I was taught, the difference being he uses it in his ministry, whereas I expose it in my ministry. And our hearts are, be, are to be like Priscilla, who corrected the Alexandrian preacher in the Acts of the Apostles to bring love and blessing, not to pray against them, but to pray for them so that they might receive the real truth. And there are those in our local church of Scotland who are staying on in there to see the truth come through. And that can only come through with the real word of God. 
and not these background influences. And our course takes us. If you want our notes, we're on part two. It's 56 pages long. We're on page seven. No way are we going to get through these tonight. But we'll get through some significant material that I want you to grasp. Because let me warn you, these are the very last of the last days, which is why, have I got my hand right? No, it's this way. There it is. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. My job is to bring perfection, perfect the saints for the work of the ministry to still reach every creature with the gospel. But to do that, I have to be like Jeremiah, be as the weeping prophet, who declared in 110 of his prophecy that we've got to pull down before we can build up. My son, dear Matthew, who now no longer can go to his day centers, uh, he's been diagnosed with autism, and he is a modern day miracle believe me where he has been out for most of the day in the garden gardening we have a large garden here at the college in Witton and he's done a magnificent job today we love him and this is a precious time for us to be with him yes. so instead of being negative we're being positive Amen. and see the Lord moving through this situation that he is, I believe, being brought into a calmness which it can only be by the Spirit of God. And there's peace in this house. Yes, we're on lockdown. Yes, things have changed. One of the big changes, you might see a big difference in Lindsay's hair because I've become a hairdresser. Be it that with this lockdown, she can no longer go to the wonderful hairdressers at Port William Hair Flair, where the girls there are magnificent. So I, I've got to get up to the standards of Alison and Margaret, which is going to be quite hilarious. But uh, we're going to give it a go because we're more than conquerors in all the things we need to do. You might even witness my hair getting even longer. Might be competing with Samson. But I'm telling you, these are precious times. And if we can reach you by the internet, that's precious to us. And our hearts are to bring the real gospel. Not the counterfeits. And we've been going back to the days of Alexandria... And uh, a Greek god came in, which developed into the science of hermeneutics. And this god was called, of course, Hermes. Now, many will think that's the delivery, deliverer of the catalog goods. But <laughs> it has an ancient history. And just yes, say something. I don't easy. really normally like to interrupt the mighty course fine. here, but just to mention, folks, well, that come um, up and when say, you read text, let, let the people well, see. Okay. Now, they I'm know, not responsible for this hair. I've got to. I just, uh, <laughs> I'll be responsible for them tomorrow. <laughs> okay, folks, what it's about, just very quickly, David has mentioned the god Hermes and how it's linked with hermeneutics, which is the science of interpretation, is it not? Yes, well, it is. Well, because uh, I teach Textus Receptus Greek, the Greek New Testament Greek, the new proper New Testament Greek. And <laughs> um, hermeneumai, you often find that word mentioned um, in the New Testament, certain chapters of the Gospels, um, which is being interpreted. You know, where they use a Hebrew word like rabbi for teacher or you know, uh, Messiah and Christ, all the things like that. And so this word hermeneumai is the Greek word for interpreting, an, you know, one language into another language. Okay? That is, that, that's it. Thank, thank you, Lindsay. Praise the Lord. Now, to come back to Hermes and continuing what Lindsay said, 
In Greek mythology, Hermes was a messenger from the gods to the humans. And so we find in these new NIV churches that there's an obsession over having words from God given as a message from one person over the other. Mm. Now the Bible says prophecies for edification, exhortation and comfort. But these words from God, and we did have a ministry of Barry South Wales which is, got destroyed by words from God being passed one to another. Not the real God, but the other God. See, the Bible talks of another Jesus. Now, we have seen how much damage caused by words from God to people. God in inverted commas. Massive amount. We've seen it cause death. Mm. Now, this obsession has taken precedence over the preaching of the word. It's the word that the Lord confirms with signs. Whereas in the NIV churches, that is the spiritual NIV churches, wrong spirit, we see the signs of the gods. Daniel 3.25 describes a Jesus in the NIV as being a son of the gods. The NIV gives the same title to Lucifer as it does to its Jesus, for they are one of the same. Which is why if you are in an NIV church, please leave now. Particularly because of Exodus 15, 26, which refers to the plagues of Egypt. Mm. The NIV being a manifester of these plagues. There's also in these NIV churches, particularly in the charismatic world, being an obsession which, which is, um, they, they say we're allowing the spirit to move. And they'll say things like, oh, the spirit hasn't allowed me to preach today. Well, Jesus is the word. But then in the NIV, he is not because of the Gnostic influences of Alexandria. In addition to this, Hermes is responsible for bringing the arts of bringing out hidden meanings to scriptures in a passion known in theological terms as hermeneutics. Now, one side of hermeneutics can be good in the degree, science of understanding scripture, knowing what it meant then to know what it means today. That's one thing. But that, that, that good thing is well overtaken by the bad things in which other earthly meanings are put into the text which are not there. This has resulted in a whole minefield of theological opinion. The theologians have become like the scientists. Instead of being agreed over one word, they're now arguing over many words because the new translations all have different doctrines from one to the other. So now we have a whole world of what's known as critical study, which has divided the church from the ancient creeds of belief. So church ministers, and we saw this here in the Church of Scotland, here at Whithorn, Scotland, that scripture is being interpreted, and Lindsay recognised this, being a Greek scholar, with the eyes and perception of a Greek god. Now we, we challenge you to check out the syllabuses of theological institutions. It certainly was the case of Elam Bible College. Now we have proof scriptures to show this to you. 1 John 5, 7 in the KJV. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And remember, Oregon described as a church father in the introduction to the Nestle Land text, which underlies all new translations, describes this not to be so. 
So the NIV says there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. But I can be in agreement with someone, but not one with someone. Yes. For it takes you to be married to, to the one, if you, as we're married to Christ. In Ephesians 5, I speak as Christ and the church, as a man leaves his parents to be joined to one wife. Jeremiah 3.14, we are married to him. That's the oneness we are talking about, the coexist and co-equal Godhead, which is denied in the new translations. Philippians 2.6 in the KJV being very different to that of the new translations. Now, within the whole mythology around this Greek god Hermes and the philosophies around him, were animal symbols, which Lindsay will know about. They were the rooster and the tortoise. Mm. Now, when we saw the Toronto blessing coming in, we had sounds going off like roosters. Mm. But what we've got to remember is that Hermes was also the god of thieves. And how many ministries have we witnessed being stolen? We're covering one on Tuesday night, the restoration program, the stealing of the Elam Pentecostal Church, the Egyptian god Thoth being in the Elam College Library when I was there, Alexandrian belief being constantly taught, and indeed George Jeffrey's vision and George Jeffrey's financial resources and George Jeffrey's whole movement was stolen by the god, the Greek god Hermes. He was also known as a phallic god of boundaries, with many gods as offspring. Now, in the NIV charismatic circles, how much immorality have we witnessed, Lindsay? Now, these many gods of Hermes, are you ready for this, Lindsay? I'm going to name the gods. One Pan, yes. the Greek god of nature, shepherds and flocks. Now, Lindsay can pronounce these better than I. Hermaphroditus, yes. who was changed into a person. Wait for this. What are we seeing today? People with both male and female parts. You see, there's always a devil behind these things. And we're naming them in our program tonight. And please, if you're watching this, pass this on, pass this on. Get it all over Facebook, get it all over Twitter, get it all over LinkedIn or whatever means you can get it across. Priapus through whom Herbie's phallic origins survived. So he had this form, and through Priapus, he continued this form of a person with both male and female parts. Because when a person, a male, for example, can be female to male, apparently male to female, he doesn't actually lose his male parts, but seems to gain a female part without going into the details. Makes my eyes water even thinking about it. I had to go and see the doctor, do wonderful Dr. Hilliard, by the way. We're so grateful to our doctors here. We're not in competition with them as long as they're bringing life, which they do. Dr. Hilliard Ducker and Warburton, we love them with all of our hearts. They do a magnificent service to the people of the Maccas Peninsula. And we're right with them 100%. And we are praying for their protection in relation to the COVID-19, that none of them will come affected, neither the nurses nor the carers. And we appreciate them so much and we love them. But I believe we reached a point where only the word of God will do. Now Priapus survived 
bringing forward these beliefs of male and female, also coming out of the Greek god Hermes in Lindsay, where Eros or Cupid, and Teich, the goddess of luck, oh, yes. Abderus and Ortelius, the prince of thieves. We did a program this morning, God led us to do it, called the Coppite Church. Now, I was brought up on the Coppites, on the Spy and Cop, Liverpool. And if you were to ask me whom I would trust more than the church people and the churches we've been involved with, I have fond memories of the Spy and Cop in my youth in the 60s and 70s because as a child they looked after me and cared for me and didn't steal from me. It's in the churches we found the thieving and the immorality. And it is because of these gods which are before us through the new translations. Whereas the Spy and Cop Liverpool has the old translation of upholding the ancient landmark, recognizing what the pioneers have done, something the church has failed to do. Now Hermes is just one deceiving spirit which is in, commonly in the churches which preach NIV, RSV, NASB, oh, whatever. And we've covered on other occasions thanking our trustee and fellow minister and fellow faculty member, Reverend Suresh Ramakandran, and his studies on the Jezebel spirit which exposes a false kind of loving kindness in the British church. Now, we've always run away from the hugs of the charismatics, nothing to do with the government's social distancing policy, because we've run this policy now for decades. If a charismatic comes to hug us, we want the next bus out of town, because we know it's the love related to the gods which we've been identifying here. You know, I'm so amazed looking at the Word of God, the true Word of God, about how accurate it is. It is just incredible. And the suffering Paul went through in relating the real Word of God, the religious people constantly coming to him to attack him, to constantly threaten him. And, and we have had this how many times, Lindsay? Dozens. Over 30 odd years. 30 odd years, Lindsay. And we just named the gods. You know what the Bible says, Lindsay? When a thief is found, he shall restore sevenfold. And my God, have we found this. Now, counterfeit love is one of the main manifestations in meetings where the true word of God is not preached. You know, the NIV describes our Jesus as a mere he. You know where the word says God was manifest in the flesh? The NIV just says he was. Well, who was? We have evidence to show that it's this Jezebelic counterfeit love that is being shown in Alpha courses, which will come later in part da, 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 three of this other Jesus course. You know, this counterfeit love on the areas which we described is the love of Pan, the love of nature of the created rather than the creator. You see, in our Coppite football church this morning, we were preaching on the fact that by him were all things created, including the footballers. And we argued that we are not to worship the created, namely the footballer, but the one who created the footballer. 
and it was a joy to share this morning in our Coppite Church the baptism of Liverpool forward number nine, Roberto Firmino, who came from humble origins to become one of the greatest footballers in the world. But we don't worship him. We worship the one that created him. You know, we need to return to the agape love, the love which is the blood-shedding love of Jesus, who gave his life for us, that we should be saved from hell fire. But of course, blood and hell are missing commonly from the NIV and all the rest of them. It was God manifest in the flesh, denied in the NIV, which says he was only vindicated by the Spirit, which means he was found not guilty. But Jesus was guilty. Guilty of our sin. For in the NIV there's no salvation. Because unless Jesus carried our sin to the cross and took our guilt, then none of us are saved. The NIV, therefore, not having any understanding of salvation, it denying the resurrection as it relates to believers, we, according to the KJV, being members of his body, flesh and bones, namely the physical resurrection of Christ on this earth, whereas this is denied in the equivalent verse in the NIV and all the rest of them, Ephesians 5.30. You know, those who preach the Gnostic word are often found to be academic and loving, but when you deep in, dig into the surface, it isn't a love which is prepared to die for you. It's a love that is in direct opposition to the blood-bought word. You know, when we found people, I used to go on the Spion Cop, which is the end of Anfield, where about 30,000 people used to gather, there used to be crushes and people used to fall over, that unless we looked after each other, there'd be people killed. But there was such love one to another, we used to pick the people up and pass them over our hands down to the ambulance brigade. There was a love and care and devotion that we would give our lives for our friends. I found more love in the football crowd than in most churches Lindsay and I have been through. And the reason for this is because the Gnostic word has produced churches that have become playgrounds of devils in which immorality and strange goings on are rife. Gone is the preaching of the real word which brings correction and conviction. The Bible declares all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Gnostic churches play on the feeling realm. And often NIV churches, and NIV is just one example, their members are moved by physical feelings and sensations. Knowing the difference between a genuine word from God and a word of feeling, the word from the counterfeit, is the key to successful Christian living. Successful Christians study the word diligently and are not moved by a sweet voice or pleasant vision as the basis of divine guidance. You know, if your hunger is for the spiritual experience before the word of God, especially when it applies to direction, you are not in the body of Christ, move. The Bible is very bold in 
talking of these matters in 2 Timothy 2, 15 to 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Lindsay, how often have we witnessed profane and vain babblings that have led to sexual immorality? Acts 17.11 declares that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. That they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And 2 Peter 1.10 declares, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You know, the Gnostic experience NIV Church or RSV Church or whatever develops its experience-orientated meetings into a place where interest in the Word and interest of the preaching of the Word declines. Yeah. There's no respect for ministers who faithfully preach the Word for the NIV church member, deep in deception, has started to move into pride with false words from God, which really are part of spiritual words linked to combining philosophical, pagan and Christian thinking. Here are some examples of false words. They'll come to you and say, you are a special instrument for God, rather than being the manifestation of God through the crucifixion of the flesh, that we live not yet I, but Christ. They'll say to you that you are more advanced than others, that you're different than others. You must make a separate path, they say. They'll also say and give you direction that you must give up your job and live by faith. That's not what we do. We will say to people, and we have someone coming to join us who is giving up her job. But the Lord told her, for direction needs to come directly from Him when it comes to these life-changing experiences. And she has shared this with us. And her passion to live by faith, which is so awesome, but it hasn't come through our persuasion has not come through our word from God. It has come from her heart. And we have encouraged her to hear God for herself. Direction words outside of edification, exhortation and comfort are not from God. And that's 1 Corinthians 14.3 proves it. He that prosifieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And following on from these words come activities designed to please the senses. Church life is full of this. Our local church has its nitwits no longer. Sewing clubs and so forth. Now, if God's called you to run a sewing club, you will run one. I remember our mission hall, a great sewing and knitting club for the missionaries to send out, but it was called of the Spirit. But make sure it is called of the Spirit. There's nothing wrong in having a knitting and sewing club as long as God's called it into being. Or is it to please the senses is my challenge to our local Kirk here. Or has it been led of the Spirit? I ask the question. Within this belief structure is the belief within the individual that they are giving their bodies to God. Comments being made like, I feel compelled to sound like a cockerel. There are twitchings of the nerves, feelings of drafts and sensations of wind flowing on the body, all parts of this new 
Gnostic experience, bringing together paganism with a form of Christianity, which is the whole ethos of the NIV and the gods which we've described, because no longer is faith the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Instead, we have an emphasis on physical senses and physical manifestations. All who take part in these NIV churches, they would call the coming of the Spirit. I've even witnessed, I'm sure you have too, excitement that there has been no preaching of the word. I've even seen, as Lindsay has, reliance on these apparent words from God, awaiting a confirmation in the natural realm. And in our Sunday morning course, How to Hear from the Spirit of God, we deal with the false doctrine of putting out a fleece and how dangerous that can be. You know, there was an occasion God used that method in the Old Testament. But now through the blood of Christ, we have access to the Father, which only the high priests had in the Old Testament, and not only on the Day of Atonement. We have that access day by day, that a witness in our spirits we can take as being the witness rather than having to have this confirmed by fleeces which the devil is bound to put your way because he is the God of this world and he is the other Jesus that combines intellectualism, paganism and apparent Christian thinking. That, you know, is as far we're going to go today. Next week we're going to look at the doctrine of Jesus being a son of the gods and going back to where that came from, from Clement of Alexandria. But we preach here the old cross, the old rugged cross. It's only by this cross that you can be saved. A.W. Tozer wrote a brilliant piece, The Old Cross and the New. We've named the gods tonight, which are the gods running your church, if it's an NIV, RSV, NASB, NKJB, v, message, good news, all of them. We stand here by the true word of God, which warns us of another Jesus, as Paul puts it. And that we are bearing with those, because we love you. Long for you to return to be a student of the real word, which you can be in one of the very few colleges now preaching the true word, the Bible College of Wales, here in Whithorn, Scotland, the land of the Covenanters, where Rhys Howells founded this ministry in the 1920s on the true word of God. Will you come? Is God calling you to be a student here, be a worker here? Let us know. ECCTV4219 at gmail.com And as Lindsay comes forward to sing the old rugged cross made the difference. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this Bible study tonight time to bring life unto them that find the true word that thy glory father manifest over these coming weeks of the exposure of the other Jesus so men women and children can find the true Jesus because in these days of pestilences not only pestilences famines you've only got to go on a supermarket website to witness famine mm. And they'll tell you there's no end of food in the system. But where is this on the shelves? You see, famine can not only come through shortage, but also through the inability to distribute food. 
That has been the case of many of the famines in Africa. And we're having the same story in Britain. The Bible warns of these days. And you need to be in the real word of God mm. to be an overcomer. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, David. The prophet Jeremiah said to those of Israel who had, of Judah who had wandered off the path and were worshipping Baal and going the wrong way. And he said, this thus saith the Lord, seek ye for the old paths. I've told you to do this, he said, for therein will you find rest, but ye would not. So let's just seek those old paths because he says, I am the Lord, I change not. And we need that peace and that rest and that confidence and that faith in God these end times. These plagues and these pestilences, we've had all that this year. We've had the plague of locusts. We've had the plagues. We've had the fires. We've had the floods. Everything. All signs of the end times. So let's cling on. Let's walk in the old paths and find rest. And the old cross. The old rugged cross. Towards a life filled with aimless desperation Without hope walk the shell of a man That a hand with a nail print stretched down Just one touch, then a new life began. And the old rugged cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. And anger Little feet Ran in terror To hide Now these walls Ring with love Warmth and laughter Since the giver of love
The giver of life is said to us today, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man cometh to the Father except by me, the giver of life. Amen. Good night and God bless you. See you tomorrow.